Good morning, good morning, people of God. We thank you for joining us here at Freedom Worship Ministries. We appreciate you for taking time out of your uh, schedules today just to help us to magnify the Lord. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. And as scripture says, we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Our God is awesome and he's awesome all by ourselves. So I'm going to ask that you join in with us today and let us magnify the Lord with us. Come magnify him. Don't let me do it by myself. Amen. God has not only been good to me, but I'm quite sure that God has been good to you as well. So let's take this time to give God some glory. Let's appreciate him. Let's love on him. Let's let him know that he's more than somebody who just uh, fulfill our wish list but he is God and besides him there is no other let us align ourselves and focus ourselves right now to give God glory let's lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily beset us and let's give God the glory that's due to his name let's honor him today amen because he is so worthy he is so worthy he is wonderful he's magnificent he, he just listen and our God is on standby to just blow our socks off he just needs you and I to just trust him trust him regardless of how it looks but to and to have confidence that God is still on our side amen so I'm gonna ask that you would join me in prayer father in Jesus name we thank you Lord for this day we magnify you, we glorify you, we honor you. Lord, we just want to bless your name. There's none like you. Lord, you are absolutely awesome. We thank you, Lord, because we know that you have kept us out of dangers, Lord, that we could see, and dangers, Father God, that we had no we, we had no clue that was about to overtake us. Lord, we thank you for blocking the attacks of the enemy. We thank you for blocking his attempts and his ways, Father God. And Lord, we pray as we come here standing before your throne, as we come here, Lord, standing in need of another blessing, standing in need of prayer. Lord, we ask that you begin to just search us, search our hearts, Father God. Search our minds, Father God. Lord, reveal to us those areas, Father God, that we still need you, Father God, to work out. Lord, we come to you as an unfinished work. We come to you as children, Father God, before a righteous parent. Lord, we come to you right now, Father God, because, Lord, we are a mess. Lord, we are undone. And, Lord, we come before you, Father God, because we know, Father God, that, Lord, that there are areas in us, Lord, that we have not allowed your spirit to have rule and place in, in our lives. So, Lord, forgive us right now, Lord. Forgive us of our waywardness. Forgive us for those times that we just said we're going to go our own way. Forgive us, Father God, for thinking that we're smarter than you, Father God. Forgive us, Father God, for just resisting your spirit. Forgive us, Father God. We ask, Lord, even right now that you are creating us a clean heart and renew a right spirit. Lord, give us a heart and, and give us ears to hear your word. Give us a receptive heart to allow your spirit to lead and guide us as we go through this thing we call life. Lord, we understand that our lives are too fragile to try to handle it in our own intellect. So, Lord, we come right now, Lord, asking you, Holy Spirit, to lead us and guide us. Lord, we commend this, our lives to you. And Lord, we pray as those, while we may be doing fine, Lord, there are others, Father God, who are suffering. Like the people of the Ukraine, that Father God, they're suffering. Even the people of Russia, they are suffering, Father God. Even the people that may be not so far overseas, but Lord, they're in our houses. They're in, Father God, our neighborhoods. Lord, they're in our fellowship. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would just move by your spirit in each and every one of those situations. There's relationship, Father God, that need to be mended. There's un misunderstanding that have caused breaking fellowship. Lord, we ask that you would just mend it, Father God. Touch the hearts of those who are thinking opposite, Father God, and bring us back to where you called us to be, Father God. Lord, so speak to our hearts and minds, Father God. We declare, Lord, that we're ready to hear word. 
We need to hear a word, Father God, that change. We need to hear a word, Father God, that will move on our lives. We need to hear a word, Father God, because we know just one word from you can make everything all right. So, Father, in Jesus' name, bless these, your people, Father God, as they hear and receive your word. I pray that you would just move on their perspective situations, Father God. I ask you to remember the first lady, Lord, bless her as well, Father God. I ask, Father God, that you would just, Lord, every place, every pastor, Father God, every congregation, Lord, bless them that are moving in accordance with your will and your purpose, Father God, because we are one body in Christ. So, Lord, have your way. Bless this word, Father God. I pray, Father God, let it bring a fresh revelation to your hearers, Father God. So speak to me, Father God. I come yielded. I come empty of my own will and purposes. I come empty of the world's influence and ask you, Lord, to fill me that I may be, fill me to the point where I may overflow into your people. And Lord, I thank you that you hear my prayer. I thank you, Lord, that you're blessing us. I thank you that you're working it out. I honor you right now, Father God. I just want you to know, Lord, that we love you. In Jesus' name, let the people of God say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. And besides him, there is no other. And don't you ever forget it. Your circumstance, your situation is not bigger than your God. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty, 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 mighty big God. And there's no shortness in him. Glory. Amen. For a few moments that it is for us to share together, I'm going to ask that you would turn to Psalms 37. Psalms 37. This is where I believe the Spirit want to lead us. Today I want to speak to someone who may be in the middle of I would like to say the process and I want to encourage you today that regardless of how it feels regardless of where you may be or how long you've been in a thing I'm going to encourage you today as our sermon title, title will suggest in a few moments I'm going to ask that you turn again to Psalms 37 verse 23 Psalm 37 verse 23 and since we're here, we're going to read from verse 24 as well. So Psalms 37, verses 23 through 24. And the word of the Lord reads, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand amen our sermon thought today that the spirit will give me utterance is this stick with the process stick with the process amen beloved anything worth obtaining comes with a price tag and that price tag is process. And the key to maintaining the process is patience. Here what Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 35 and 36 says. Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance. So that after you have done the will of God. You may receive the promise. Beloved, let's, look, let's examine this verse right here coming from verse 35. It said, cast, therefore, do not cast away your confidence. I want you to remember that your confidence is not in the thing that you are asking God for. It's not in the blessing. It is in God himself. So when the scripture said, don't cast away your confidence, don't cast away your trust in God. See, we trust in God, not and, and, and we even though people say, I'm believing God for this, I'm believing God for that. But listen, I'm believing God, period. So that if God give me that, because I, I understand long time ago that 
although I may pray for something, I give God the, the, the parental, or I should say, I give God the fatherly uh, prerogative, if you will, that if what I'm praying for is not in line with his will for me, then Lord, don't give it to me. Hello, somebody. Now that takes some maturity because you know how we are. We want what we want and we'll and we'll pray about it. And I'm not saying don't pray about it, but you also gotta give God room to be who he is. And that is God. So my confidence is in God, not in the blessing I'm praying for, but it is in God. And then it says, which has great reward. Listen, listen, I'm going to tell you about the reward of God. I like how first Corinthians chapter two, verse nine says it. It says, I have not seen nor ear has heard, nor has it entered into the heart of them that love God. The things that God has that, that love him. So in other words, I said it earlier, God is on standby to blow your socks off. You may be blessed asking God for this, and God said, no, I got something much greater and something much bigger, but we got to give God hit the room to do what he needs to do. But I need, well, but what I'm trying to get you to understand is that we got to have our confidence in God. So regardless, if things take a while to manifest, hello, somebody, keep your confidence in God. It's going to reward you after a while. But verse 36 is where I want to get to right now. It says, for you need, you have a need of endurance. Some translation says patient. Some, I even read one that says patient endurance. I like that. We need to have patience, endurance, so that after you've done the will of God, and that's what I want us to talk about right now. Doing the will of God is a process. And listen, people of God, we do not want to avoid, abort, I should say, the process. There's something in the process. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But there's something in the process that we got to follow. Something in the process that we get out of by just sticking with the process. So we may receive the promise. Listen, we got, if we're going to see the promises, we're going to see the blessing. If we got to stick to the process, people of God. You see, we need the process. See, God won't, God is destined us to go through process. Now, I'm going to tell you why the pro process is so important. Because anything that we get without process will subject become unappreciative. And when you become unappreciative, you, 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 the thing, once you become unappreciative, you begin to disrespect the thing that you obtain. Anything that was easy for you to get, anything that didn't cost you nothing, anything that didn't take time, you know, you lose interest in it quickly because you look at it, well, that was easy for me to do, that was easy for me to get, and if it, if it runs out, I can just do the same thing to get it. But when you have had to go through and you have had to labor, watch this, and you have had to stick through the process, your mindset change, your heart change. You become more appreciative. You become more appreciative of God. And you see, I get it. I get it. Trust me. I know that none of us like process. Listen, I, I, I'm advocating that we got to stick with the process, but that's not only just a word for you, but that's a word for me because I have to stick with the process. And trust me, I, I'm, I'm of this mindset. And let's be real. I believe I'm not by myself. That if God going to give me something, Lord, you don't have to make me go through the process. Just give it to me. But you see, I believe God allowed us to go through the process. In fact, God mandates that we go through the process because God is trying to develop us. God loves us through the process. We get chance to see the love of God by going through the process. And sometimes, people of God, it takes you to stop long enough and just kind of look back what God has brought you through. And then you'll understand that if I didn't go through the through, I wouldn't know how good God really is or have been in my life. We got to go through the process. I know it. Trust me. I don't want to go through the process. But listen, I know that the process is good for me. God loves me through the process. So today, people, God, I want to encourage you by just echoing this sentiment. Stick with the process. Here, what Philippians chapter one and verse six says, it says it like this. Being confident of this very thing that he, he is capitalized. So we know that talking about our father, that talking about God, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it in, until the day of Jesus Christ. Listen, God, when you went, listen, when you was even thought of, God started the work. 
Even before you received Christ, God was working. He started a work in you. He didn't just start a work in you when you received Christ. God is starting a work. He has started a work in you. In other words, God has started your life on, in a process. And he said, I'm going to work this process until the day my son comes and bring you home. Until the day we are raptured. To the day that Jesus come back and bring us back home. We're going through a process. I need you to hear that. We're going through a process. And I know sometimes process is bitter. Sometimes process is long. Sometimes process is, is just, let's be downright ugly. It doesn't feel good to go through process. But listen. God loves us through the process. God is with us through the process. So we got to stick with the process. Now let's return back to Psalms 37 and verse 23. You'll find these words. The steps. Let me stop right there. The steps, the steps, steps. When, the, when you talk about steps, that automatically I can interchange steps for process. Because what, what is process? Steps. A series of actions that must occur in a specific order. So the, the steps of a good man, listen, you got to understand right here when it says good man. Some versions say godly people or godly man. In other words, if you belong to God, you got to understand your steps have already been ordered by the Lord. I know you, you, you know, we, we got to resist the urge. That the world does. See, the world will tell you, you know, you're grown. You, you ought to do what you want to do. After all, you're over age 21. You're 21 and older. You know, you, you got your own this, your own that. You should be able to do it the way you, you got to do what you want. Do what you want to do when you want to do it. But as a child of God, as a man of God, as a woman of God, listen, our steps are ordered. So that means the way we conduct ourselves is not like the world. The way we conduct ourselves is not like, the, like everybody else. And I, I'm going to read this scripture in your hearing because I want you to understand there's a danger of trying to do things outside of the process. There's a danger when we try to do just like what the world does because the world will try to get you to skip the process. Listen, I know about taking short. There, there's nothing. Is there anything wrong with a shortcut? It depends on what it is. But when it comes to the things of God, there are no shortcuts. Trust me, beloved, if there was a shortcut, I would have already discovered it. But I find out that there are no shortcuts. Let me read Matthew 7, verse 13, and you're listening. It says, enter by the narrow gate. The narrow gate is God's process, God's way, Jesus. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and there are many who go in by it in other words what is the scripture saying to us it's talking about yes jesus is the way the truth and the light he's the way he is the process he is but you see what the world would do the world don't want to do it jesus way the world don't want to do it god's way the world want to go and do it opposite of God's way because God's way just take too long. You hear what I'm saying? But you see what we're going to learn through the process that the process is actually not so much for us to get to the thing of God, but it's actually so that we can be prepared for the things of God to be prepared for the blessing. See, many of us are asking for blessings that we really are not prepared, but it doesn't mean that God won't give it to you, but he got to take us through the process. Amen, somebody. So we don't want to skip the process because if it seems too easy, more than likely it is too easy. Amen. But let's look at verse 14. It says, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who finds it. In other words, yes, it's, it's, it's a small, it's a process. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It is a process. So people, God, we got to stick to the process. I know sometimes doing it, seems like doing it God's way, it seems like you're left behind. It seems like you should be, you look, especially when you look at people and you see it look like they're advancing in their life, advancing in their career, advancing in their finances. And you look at it, you say, I'm a child of God. I, I do this. I do that. I try to live right. I try to do things according to God's will. But it seems like the people who don't even acknowledge God just seem like they're just passing by. Don't be tricked. Don't be tricked. God has a way and we must be stick to the process. I'm speaking to somebody right now that's thinking about getting out of the process of God and doing it like everybody else. Listen, I want to encourage you today. Stick with the process. 
God got something. We're going to talk about why we all to stick with the process in the next few moments. But we got to stick with the process. See, the devil will try to get you to focus on, well, you know what? She did it like this. And here I am. I'm trying to live virtuously. I'm trying to be a virtuous woman. I'm trying to be a, a Proverbs 31 type of woman. But here it is. She seems like she's doing whatever she want to do and she's getting ahead. Don't be fooled. That's the one on broad ways. Listen, it will come to nothing. Don't let the devil trick you. Don't let the devil pull you out. Stick with the process. Let's return back to Psalm 37, 24. Though he fall, this is what I love about it. When you are in the process of God, he, as we learn in verse 23, he delights in our way. God take an interest with you when you in his process, when you're doing it God's way, he takes an interest. And I want you to know when you in the process of God, you're going to have moments where you may fall. But listen, listen what this word said is that though he fall, though she may fall, he or she shall be shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him or her with his hand. Listen, when we are in God's way. And we're doing it God's will. We're doing, we stick into the process. And when we have our moments, when we come short, listen, God going to uphold us because we're, des we're desiring to do it his way. So people, God, I just want to encourage you today and tell you, stick with the process. I know process can be bitter, process can be long, process can be unpleasant, but stick with the process. God is trying to get us through. Now, I want to just take some time right now, as I was saying earlier, I want to encourage you why we ought to stick to the process. Let me give you just a few pointers and, and then I'm going to let you go. Point number one, why we ought to stick with the process? Because here it is, I kind of alluded to it earlier, we get to know God. In the process, we get to know God in the process. Listen, listen, hear what the word of God says in Psalms 34 and 8. It says it like this. Oh, taste and see. Oh, taste and see. What does that mean? When you said when the Bible said, oh, taste and see what the Bible is talking about process. In order for you to taste and see, you got to go through the process that the Lord is good. Bless is the man. That trusted in him. In other words, trusting in God is a process. We cannot fully experience who God is unless we had to go through the process. You see, in order for you to know God is a healer, guess what? You got to go through that process of needing a healing. You got to go through that process of, of, of sickness to know that God is a healer, to know that God is a way maker. Guess what? You had to go through the process of not having and seeing God deliver and work things out that you thought wasn't going to work out. You we got to listen. There's some things you will never learn about God until you go through the process. Deliver me from people who all they know is just what the scripture says. Hear, hear what I'm saying. Deliver, deliver me from people who can just quote the scripture. But give me some people who got a testimony. You see, the order for you to get a testimony to know that God is good and that you can taste and see that he's good is that you went through that process to get that testimony. You see, you don't know who our good God is until you have to go through till you have to go through the process. Amen, somebody. Let me give you another point. Why we need process and why we are not avoid the process. And now we, why we are not avoid the process. You see, process matures us. Process matures us. It's something about process that matures us. Listen, people of God, inside of you, inside of me, there are some areas that still is, there are some areas that are undone. There are some areas that's unmade. There are some, there are some areas that God needs to work out before he can deliver certain things to us. And what God does, because he knows that we're not ready yet, he has to go, we have to go through the process. And you see, if we try to avoid the process, the danger of not going through the process is that you will not be mature enough to handle what God wants to actually release unto you. 
You have to go through the process. You see, many of us are asking for, Lord, give me this. Lord, let me have this. Lord, move me up to here. And you see, God said, I don't have no problem with doing that. In fact, it's in my will to do it. But guess what? Before I put you here, I got to take you to the process so that when you get up here, number one, you appreciate it. Number two, you know it was me. And number three, you'll be wise where you stand. Hello, somebody. We need process. Amen. Listen, I want to give you something. You see, process, the, word, the Bible calls it sanctification. That's growing up in the things of God. That's growing up in the things of God. Appreciating the word, following the word, allowing the spirit of God to speak to us. And we do what the spirit says, because if, we're, if we haven't went through the process yet, we, we, we're illegitimate. We're not ready for it. And a blessing can become a curse if you have not been prepared for it. I told you, it, it process, it mature us or prepare us. Listen, listen, what? First Timothy chapter three. In verse six. Now, this scripture is, 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 you know, on the surface, it talks about a church leader. It talks about a bishop. But you can also interchange it to whatever it is that God is going that you are asking God to bless you. It says not a novice, not a newbie, not somebody who inexperienced, not somebody watch this who have not gone through the process. At least being puffed up with pride. He fall into the same condemnation as the devil. So listen here. If you're going to be a church leader, I'm going to talk to the church leaders right now. If you're going to be a pastor, you're going to be a bishop, whatever. Listen, you have to submit to God's process. That's why, because it's dangerous to put somebody who is a novice. A novice is somebody who's inexperienced, a newbie, if you will. Because chances are, if you attain something too easy, you'll begin to think it is all about you. And not about God. And when you think it's all about you, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Pride going to slip in. You're going to try to, you're going to make decisions without seeking God. And that's when you get in trouble. You see, when you go through the process, you realize quickly, if it had not been for God who's been on my side, I would have messed it up. So listen, we got to stick to the process. I want to let me let me just kind of rest on that point right there, because that's that that point right there really stuck out to me because process mature us. And I begin to think about David, you know, David, the first, second king, the second king in Israel, David, the one that killed Goliath with 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 a sling and a rock. You know, David, the one who 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 um, who was considered one of the best kings that ever lived in Israel. Did you not know? That when he was anointed to become king, when it was announced over his life that God was going to make him a, the next king after Saul, he was about 15 years old. You know, when he actually walked into the and, and it manifests in his life, age 30. What's between 15 and 30? 15 years. And those 15 years is called process. He didn't try to hurry that time up. And see, a lot of us, God has maybe revealed to you certain things and certain great things he had done for. But what God does not reveal to you is that you're going to have to go through a process to get to it. Hello, somebody. If, if not, the process is maybe just for you to trust God, because you, I told you, you learn something in the process. Let me tell you about Joseph. Joseph, he had a dream. You know, Joseph in the book of Genesis. The one that became the governor of, of Egypt, the one who's second in charge, a slave, if you will, became the second one uh, in charge in Egypt at the time, which was the, the, which was the world power at that time. If you go back to Genesis chapter 37 and read it to chapter 50, you will find out that he went through a process. He had the dream that he was going to be in charge. You know how old he was? 17. And you know, after he had a dream, his brother sold him into slavery. But you know what happened? You know when he became the second one in charge? At age 30. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? Are y'all hearing what's, what's going on in the scripture? Are you hearing what the spirit of God is saying? You see, God knows that process mature us. If he had, a, if he had a ascended to power at age 17, he would have been inexperienced. He wouldn't have appreciated it. He wouldn't have been known that I had to go through the process and experiences of learning to seek God. So I know when I get here, I know how to conduct myself. I told you process mature us. Let me give you a third point. Process teaches us the word that none of us really like to hear. Process teaches us patience. Hello, somebody. 
Hear what Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 says. It says, and let us not be weary in well-doing. That's process, y'all. Don't get weary as you're doing the process. For in due season, that we got to understand, in due season, God has an appointed time. What if I told you that the appointed time of God is adjustable? Hear what I'm saying? It's adjustable based upon how you go through the, go, go through the process. I need you to hear that. We, you don't know what level you are in the process. I need somebody to hear that because somebody is closer than you thought you were. And right now you, you're tempted to just give up. And I want to encourage you today. Stick with the process. Don't get weary and well doing. Continue the process because it's, it's you know, a, your due season is right around the corner. We might, the day may be your due season and what the end, I'm going to tell you a little secret about the enemy that he don't want you to know that the, as close as you get to your breakthrough, as closer you get to your blessing, as close as you get to where God wants to place you, guess what? The enemy tries to frustrate you and try to get you to say, well, you know, this is taking a long time. Listen, you got to stick with the process because process teaches us patience because God does, as I told you last week, I believe God does not on our timetable. God has a divine timetable and God knows when we are ready. He knows when we're ready to do it because if he knows, like I just got you said, he don't want you to be a novice because if you're a novice, you want to appreciate it and you'll mess up a blessing. He said, in due season, we shall reap if we faint not, if we don't give up, if that means stick with the process. And let me give you my final point. My final point is this. Process is for a higher purpose. Process is for a higher purpose. I want to talk again about Joseph. Because if you go back and you read from Genesis 37 to Genesis 50, you'll see that, that Joseph was a man who had to go through a lot of process. He endured some hardship that he didn't even deserve. He was hated by his brothers. They were jealous because his dad favored him, the youngest, over all the other brothers. They, 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 he was hated. And even though he went from one problem, God, all, the Bible said, and God was with him, and God took him up, and then he went down. He went, seemed like his life was filled with ups, and down highs and lows before he got to the blessing. I believe God took him through that process so that when he became governor, the second one in charge under the Pharaoh, he wouldn't know how to act. Because you see, people who haven't went through the process, they don't appreciate, they, it's hard for them to appreciate where they stand. Hello, somebody. And this is a lesson. Listen, Holy Spirit, just drop this in my, my spirit. See, some parents, I'm talk, I want to talk to the parents right now. Sometimes I get it. You want your children to experience things that you never did. But listen, it's the process. See, process gives you character. See, that's not even in my notes. I want you to understand. Your pro the process that you had went through gave you character. And when, you, when people don't have, reason why a lot of people don't have good character, because they didn't go through the process. Hello, somebody. That's some free stuff for somebody. But as, as I was saying, process is for a higher purpose. Now, I wanna, what I want you to do is let's go to Genesis chapter 50. And if you begin to look at verse 15 through 20, you will see, you'll find these words where Joseph and his, his brother's father, Israel, passed away. Once they passed away, the brothers got nervous because they realized that as long as their father was alive, perhaps Joseph wouldn't retaliate for what they did. And I want you to understand, you got to go back. Them, they was not only what they, they mean to Joseph, not only they mistreated him, they, they even sold him out. Listen here, people of God. Don't be, listen, and going through the process, you might even have those who are closest to you to sell you out. He was sold into slavery. Hello, somebody. Somebody need to hear that. Somebody, listen, today is time for you to get healed. Today is time for you to get set free from what somebody who even supposed to be your family did to you. I want to, there's a word in this right here. So you'll find in those verse 15, so they got scared. They, they dad was there. They figured the only reason why Joseph wouldn't, would have, didn't retaliate against them is because of their dad. Now all of a sudden the dad died. And so what they do is they went and in verse 17, they, they sent, well, 16, they sent messengers to Joseph and said, you know, look, please, we beg you, forgive us. 
They told him, he asked him to forgive him and the trespasses of your brothers and all this stuff. So, said that that what, they, that what Israel said. And then verse 18, said, this is what I want to pick up our reading. Verse 18, it says, then his brothers also went and fell down before his face. And they said, behold, we are your servants. And verse 19 says, now this is what messed me up this morning. Joseph said to them, do not be afraid, for I am I in the place of God. Listen, listen. I said, woo, we listen. This is why I want to bring it to you, because somebody is holding a grudge against people. And I need you to understand, you need to let that grudge go. If there's going to be any retribution for what people act or how people did you, let it come from God not come from you when you let when you forgive folks what you're actually doing is you're letting yourself off the hook see some people believe that forgiving folks is giving somebody a pass for what they did to you listen no you let god handle that and you forgive folks take yourself out because if you hold on to that that right there will in turn keep you from getting all that god has for you but this is where I want to go to in verse 20. It says, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. In other words, God allowed him to go through that horrible process to prepare him to be the second one in charge. To put him in a place that he could save his whole family. That they won't, they won't suffer from starvation. All, but he had to go through. And listen, to get great things of God. I bet you there's women and men and women out there that have attained and went through and achieved high achievements. They'll tell you there is no shortcuts. You got to go through the process. And what the enemy wants you to do is he wants you to faint under the process. And since I'm already here talking about the process, I want to talk about my Lord and Savior right now. Your Lord and Savior. Think about it, what he did. He asked the Father at the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, Father, if it's your will, let this bitter cup pass from me. But then he stopped and said, but nevertheless, thy will be done. You know what he was actually saying? Lord, I don't want to go through this process. But if the only way to do your will for the higher purpose is for me to go through this process, then let your will be done. And I make my final plea to you. Let's take on our personality of our Lord and Savior. Remember, he did not want to go through the process, but because it, that process has a higher purpose, he went through the process. And today, people of God, I want to talk to that person who's saying, I'm, I'm, oh, you don't understand, Pastor, I'm, I'm about to give up. I say, hang in there and don't you give up. Stick with the process. God has a plan. You, in order to get to where God want to place you, hey, look, you got to go through the process. Yes, I acknowledge it. Process is not easy. Process can be downright bitter at times. But listen, God has a great reward if we maintain the process. So, to be loved, maintain the process. Maintain your confidence. Be encouraged today. Maintain your confidence. There's a reason why God allowing you to go through the process because God is just making you. He's preparing you. He's making you. He, he's grooming you. He's making you so that when you get to the place where God wants you, you're going to be able to you see the process helped you to have a heart for those when it's time to help others. Because you see, it's hard to help folks or have a heart for people if you haven't went through or went through the process that they're going through right now. Process is necessary for our development. I need you to hear that. Process is necessary for our development to, who, the, to the man or woman that God has purpose in our life. So today, people of God, stick with the process. Stick with the process. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we heard your word. We know, Father God, that our steps are ordered by you.
said, Lord, there have been times that, Lord, you have ordered our steps. And, and we tried to look for ways to get out of the steps. Because the steps sometimes don't look good. Sometimes the steps are scary. Sometimes the steps hurt our flesh. Sometimes the steps are very unpleasant and even bitter. But Lord, I pray that you would encourage your people today that may be in the middle of the process, those who are coming close to their journeys in. Lord, I pray right now that you just send a fresh wind of your spirit to encourage your people, Father God, to stick out the process. And I speak to them that they shall not lose. They are winners and not losers. So, Lord. Bless them, I pray, Father God. Bless your people. Help us, Father God, and be strong that we may be able to endure the process. If it means more patience, Lord, give us more patience. If it means more endurance, Lord, give us more endurance, Father God. Encourage our hearts today. And Lord, we know that you are with us because you said that you delighted in our way. So, Lord, we bless you. Bless your people, Father God. Bless them as they endure the process. Give them that strength. Remind them, Father God, when you see that we're starting to falter a little bit, remind us to stick with the process. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Right now, we're going, this is our communion. Amen. I'm going to ask that you would prepare yourselves right now whatever it is that you're going to use for your communion your elements i'm asking that you would just get take it out we're going to sanctify it amen so whether whether you have a, a cracker juice water bread whatever it is you can use what you got readily available because we're going to pray over it and when we pray over we're going to we're going to ask god to consecrate that but before we go into that that actual act of prayer let me read from you a portion of scripture coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 26. And the word of the Lord reads as follows. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as you drink, as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Join me in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we can't even imagine what you went through as you purchased our salvation. Our hearts stand in awe of you. We know you went through the process. And Lord, we're so glad that you went through the process because Lord, if you have not maintained and stuck with the process, Lord, we would have been lost forever. So we ask you to search us now, forgive us of our sins, creating us a clean heart, help us to love others as you loved us. And Lord, I pray that you would just sanctify these elements that represent your body, that represent your blood, as we partake, we remember what you did for us. And we appreciate it. And we're so grateful. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken for you and I. Take, eat all of it. And the Bible said, at the same manner, he took the cup. When he had finished praying, said, this is my blood. This is the New Testament in my blood. Drink ye all of it. And the Bible said that after him and he, he and his disciple had supped, they went out to the Mount of Olives and sing him. As I was discussing with the first lady, I was sharing with her that ministry 
is not only needed in that local congregation, but I would say that ministry is needed more outside of that local con congregation. So our Mount of Olives, I want to leave you with this right here. Our Mount of Olives is not, we may not have a Mount of Olives, but our Mount of Olives becomes our places of employment in our homes, around our loved, unsaved loved ones. Whether we're at Walmart or Publix or wherever we may go, that is our Mount of Olives. And God has purposed us to be on display, to be a representation of Him on the earth. I told you to be a child of God is the highest and the highest and holy calling that any one of us could ever attain. And the, and the great part about it, all of us are called to this high and holy calling. So, let's glorify God. Wherever God, wherever your feet may step, wherever you may find yourself, let's give God the glory. And let's show people the love of God by how we treat them. It's important for you to remember. And as I come to my close, I just want to remind you again, stick with the process. And until the next time, this is Pastor and First Lady Joyner letting you know that we love you and we bless you and we're praying for you and, we, and, and, there's, and there's nothing you can do about it. We're trying to get to where God called us to be. And we know that we all must go through the process. So join me in prayer as we close out. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may he rest, rule, and abide with us. His now and forevermore. I pray God's blessings upon each and every one of you. I declare that you're the head and not the tail. Blessing the city, blessing the field, blessing we come. And until next time, God bless you. Go in peace.